When I started my channel, I said in my early videos that if creators injected identity politics into every piece of work, eventually people would see any instance of a black, female, or gay character and claim it was that SJW nonsense, or as we'd say today, it's woke. This is the price of beating people over the head with political messaging, especially when it's poorly done. However, there's another side to that, the revising of older works. I'm not talking about creators deciding years later that a character was something that they weren't, like J.K. Rowling making Dumbledore gay. I'm talking about the audience viewing works that were clearly political as somehow above that when they were anything but. This usually happens when people like a work that's transcended its niche status and becomes popular. There's a tendency for people to claim that work as their own, looking for things in the work that fit their worldview, and ignoring or hand-waving anything that doesn't. Think The Matrix, Watchmen, or The Sandman. The Sandman series is well known for its counterculture progressive themes and characters. Neil Gaiman created the series in 1988, and as stated on Winter is Coming, quote, Throughout its run, Sandman explored stories involving interracial couples, gay couples, and so on. It prominently featured trans and non-binary characters long before trans people had entered the mainstream conversation. Despite that, or perhaps because of it, the series has gone to claim within the comic book industry, and is one of the few comic books non-comic book fans have heard of but never read. As a result, news of an adaptation brought lots of interest. However, the adaptation is being done by Netflix, who haven't exactly had a great track record of adapting pretty much anything. Just the phrase, Netflix adaptation, makes people cringe, and with good reason. When the show's cast was announced, we discovered that Kirby Hal Baptiste had been cast as Death. Here's Hal Baptiste. Here's Death. I think you can see the problem, but just in case you think I'm nitpicking, here's Death's description from the Sandman wiki, quote, Death appears as a young, attractive, slim woman of average height in her early to mid-twenties. She has very pale skin, dark eyes, long jet black hair that she wears in a variety of styles, and has an eye of Horus painted under one of her eyes. She has been described as goth in appearance, and many people, both men and women, consider her to be very beautiful. When you think goth girl, I'm pretty sure you don't imagine Hal Baptiste. That doesn't mean there aren't black goth girls. Of course there are. They are not, however, the majority of goth girls, and certainly weren't in 1988 when Gaiman created the character. There was nothing stopping him from making the character black back then, but he didn't. He could have based death on a black girl into hip-hop culture, which was starting to go global at the time, but he didn't. Instead, he chose a goth girl, and took that pale, dour, Edgar Allan Poe-obsessing, misanthrope trope associated with goth girls, and flipped it by making death kind and perky and generally likable, despite her being, you know, death. I'm sure plenty of goth girls are actually like that because appearances can be deceiving. Because of the strength of that reversal, it's not a surprise that many people, particularly young women, identify with Death, this small, perky woman who is one of the most, if not the most, powerful beings in all existence. It wasn't just her personality that did this. As many progressives love to say, it was her representation of a marginalized group that also brought in readers, particularly young women. They identified with her because she was like them, and that mattered to them. Incidentally, Gaiman acknowledged that he based Death on one of his friends, Cinnamon Hadley. It's hard to justify changing Death's appearance to another race when we know the person she was based on. Likewise, you'd think that the people obsessed with representation would realize the importance of Death's appearance and not want to change her in the adaptation. But it's current year, and being so white that we couldn't find you if it snowed is bad or not inclusive enough. So now Death needs to be a black woman. I don't know if she's still going to be goth. I don't know if her personality is going to change. The teaser trailer gave us nothing to work with. Now, this isn't to say that Kirby Hal Baptiste will suck in the role. She may be a fine actress. Let's assume she is. That doesn't change that it appears that she was hired for the race swap, though, not her talent, which is somewhat confirmed by the casting of Mason Alexander Park as Desire. The character of Desire can be male, female, both, or neither, depending on the situation. At the time the series debuted, Desire would have been described as androgynous, Today, Desire would be called non-binary, which is why Park, who identifies as non-binary, was cast. This is part of this idea that representation requires that the actors match the characters they portray. This would make some sense if we were talking about race or sex, but even then, with the miracle of makeup and this thing called acting, it's entirely possible for someone who isn't part of those groups to portray those characters. There's no particular reason to cast Park other than Park's non-binary status. And there's no particular reason to change Death's race other than to play to identity politics. Gaiman disagrees and writes this off as people who haven't read the book just being racist and transphobic. And for some people, that probably is the case. They don't like it because they don't want to see people who aren't like them. For others, they could be going along with it because it's the thing to hate. Or they're just grifting, and they don't really care about it. However, the series is overtly progressive in its themes, 
so those aforementioned people probably aren't fans of the series. It's left-leaning, likely progressive people who probably make up the bulk of the fan base, and it appears they're not happy about it either. Are they all racist and transphobic too? Or is it just that they don't want people to change death because then she would no longer be the character they love? Now, all that said, Gaiman made a valid point when he responded to this tweet by Aries Poe. Aries Poe wrote, quote, Your work was never woke. It was provocative and ahead of its time, conscientious and alternative. I wouldn't diminish your legacy by associating it with virtue signalers on soapboxes for identity politics. To which Gaiman replied, quote, Whatever it was then, it's the same thing now. Not as much ahead of its time, though, because time is caught up. And he's right. The work hasn't changed. It was provocative, conscientious, alternative, and ahead of its time for that time. By today's standards, though, it's cliched. It's no longer transgressive or counterculture because its themes and concepts are now part of the social norm, partly because of the success of the series. However, it is inherently tied to identity politics. Those concepts are heavily explored in the series to the point that if the series were released today, it'd probably be panned as woke nonsense. And this brings me back to my point about people revising older works to fit into their worldview. There's nothing about the Sandman that makes it politically neutral in its commentary. It's far from neutral. However, it's also well told, which makes it accessible to those who don't particularly agree with the political ideas expressed in the story. That can lead to a brutal wake-up call when those readers are confronted with the truth about the story. We see similar things happen with movies like The Matrix and with bands like Rage Against the Machine, where some people assume the creators were neutral nonpartisans when they clearly never were. It's like, dude, did you listen to the lyrics? What part of some of those who work forces are the same who burn crosses made you think they were neutral, let alone on your side? That doesn't mean you can't like the music. It's just that you shouldn't assume their intentions align with your worldview, especially when the opposite is clearly shown. And that brings me back to Neil Gaiman and the Sandman story. If he wrote it today, maybe he would have made Death a Black Woman. That wouldn't exactly be provocative or alternative, but that would fit with his writing style. Maybe he would have called Desire non-binary. Maybe he would have made the endless different races. Maybe. But that's not what he wrote, and those aren't the characters people came to love. And that's really the issue. It's easy to find people complaining about wokeness who are just hateful, grifting, or really don't care. But that doesn't mean that their complaints aren't valid, or that they're not shared by genuine fans who want to see the characters they read appear on screen as they appeared in the books. You can't define characters in people's minds, give them explicit descriptions of them, and then arbitrarily change that and think it won't bother people, because it will. Those fundamentally aren't the same characters anymore. Not just because you've got a different medium and now have actors involved, but because you've changed an aspect of who those characters are. An aspect you, the creator, made important. That said, people need to keep in mind that a lot of the popular series and franchises were created by left-leaning people, and their worldviews are in those works. Some of them are more obvious than others, but it's still there, and this idea that it magically disappears when you like the series doesn't make much sense. What makes more sense is that the story worked. It got you to view things from a different perspective, one you likely never would have considered. That's the power of storytelling. It can get people to see things from the perspective of those who are not like them. It already works. That's why you don't need to change them when you adapt them. But what do I know? I'm just some guy.